hello. Welcome to another programme of That's English. Oh, hi there. Samantha, I didn't know you were interested in business. Oh, I am. One day I'd love to run my own catering business. But first, I need to draw up a business plan and then I'll be looking for investors. <laughs> well, don't count on me. I haven't got anything to invest. But you might get some ideas from today's episode. Yes. Anthony wants to set up a business, so he's looking for a business partner. As you watch, answer this question. What kind of business does Anthony want to set up? Have you worked here as a chef for long, Anthony? About six months. Uh, how did that business deal in France go? Well... In spite of the fact that I put thousands of pounds into the business, we never broke even. The other person involved wasn't as committed as I was, even though he was family. You never made a profit? No. Never go into business with a member of the family, Anthony. Mm. Never mind. It's only money. So, you'd like to set up a restaurant business? Yes. And I thought you might be the man to talk to. You ran your own catering business once, didn't you? I did? Oh, yes, I did. I enjoyed it. No, it was hard work. <music> Top quality. I'm looking for a business partner. Maybe you have some contacts? What sort of restaurant is it? You should know exactly what you want. Investors looking for a good business opportunity appreciate that. My dream is to have an eco-friendly restaurant. Hmm. In spite of the crisis, there is a lot of money in the organic food business. It's not just the money, Gary. You must think of your profits, though. And running a business is hard work. Remember, money doesn't grow on trees. Although, come to think of it, Money might grow on organic trees. <laughs> <laughs> I think an organic restaurant would do very well. Yeah. Burgers. There's a lot of money in burgers. Exactly. But the meat used in my burgers will be 100% organic beef. Frozen chips are very handy. The people dining in my restaurant will be eating homemade chips made from... Organic or potatoes, yeah. I'll see what I can do, although I can't promise anything. Thanks, Gary. Frozen chips. I don't think so. <laughs> Anthony? I think Gary is more interested in short-term profits, really. Although he did run his own catering service. I'm not sure if it was gourmet cooking, though. He doesn't sound like the right man to give business advice. No, maybe not. But despite his dubious business history, I think his heart's in the right place. What do I do? You have to talk to a friend of mine, Kirsty. Despite the fact that she's a very successful business consultant, she's really easy to talk to. Why don't you invite her over for dinner? It's a great idea. Thanks, Bridget. Uh, can you give me her phone number? I agree with Bridget. I don't think I trust Gary's business advice. No, I think he just wants short-term profits or to make money as quickly as possible. Before the episode, we asked you this question. What kind of business does Anthony want to set up? My dream is to have an eco-friendly restaurant. <laughs> I think an organic restaurant would do very well. So, Anthony wants to set up an organic restaurant. In the episode, we heard people identifying people and things using reduced relative clauses. This means we can take out the relative pronoun from the statement and reduce the verb forms. We can modify the noun using the past participle. The other person involved wasn't as committed as I was, even though he was family. The full clause would be the other person who was involved. 
Or we can use the infinitive. Yes, and I thought you might be the man to talk to. In other words, I thought you might be the man who I should talk to. Or we can use the gerund. Investors looking for a good business opportunity appreciate that. Investors who are looking for a good business opportunity appreciate that. So, for example, people wanting to set up a business need to get good advice first. Yes, and investors interested in your business will want to see a proper business plan. Perhaps the first person to talk to is your bank manager. Now, in the second part of the episode, Anthony meets Bridget's friend Kirsty, a business consultant. She introduces him to Grant. As you watch, answer the question. What is Kirsty's final piece of advice to Anthony and Grant? I've been trying out these recipes for a possible menu. I only want to use organic products in the restaurant. Try these. More? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Delicious. <laughs> no. Let's get back to business. Bridget says you asked an old friend for advice. Yes, but even though he might have some prospective partners, I'm still apprehensive. I think it's very difficult to find the right person. You and your business partner really should share the same objectives. Yes, I realised that after talking to Gary. That's not everything, though. Make sure you outline the partner's individual roles and the financial conditions in a written agreement. So we need a business lawyer. Exactly. And don't forget the business plan. You must draw one up for the bank. Like this one. That's great. Now all I need is a business partner. I know someone who could be a real possibility. He's involved in ecological farming. Despite the fact you're from different backgrounds, you have a lot in common. Yes, but how do I know? The thing to do is to meet him. His name's Grant. Nice lunch, thanks. Despite the frozen vegetables. <laughs> I supply a lot of restaurants with products from this farmer's market. Hmm. Hi, Owen. Hello, Grant. You must try this. Oh, Owen, this is Anthony. Anthony Owen, my cheese supplier. Mmm, delicious. In spite of the fact that we live in London, these farmers can supply fresh produce every day. He's right. Those vegetables being bought from that stall, they were picked this morning. These are the products I'd like to use in a restaurant. Yes. Served with herbs from the kitchen garden. Mm. Let's meet again next week and put our ideas on paper. Kirsty should come too. Good. I'll have that, please, Owen. <laughs> and I'll bring the cheese. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Have you found a location for the restaurant? No, although I've looked at a few places and I'd like Grant to see them. Now you have to draw up your business plan to present to the bank. Who's the right person to talk to at the bank? The business advisor. Excuse me a moment. Hi, Anthony. Listen, I've got a new business deal. If all goes well, I might invest in your restaurant. Uh, look, I can't really talk at the moment, Gary. I I'll call you. Uh, sorry, I gotta go. Cheers. Here's to fine food. Fine food. Sounds like the name of a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like Anthony's found the perfect business partner. Yes, Grant's really into the organic food business. So what is Kirsty's final piece of advice to Anthony and Grant? Now you have to draw up your business plan to present to the bank. Who's the right person to talk to at the bank? The business advisor. She tells them they should present their business plan to the business advisor at the bank. 
In the episode, we heard people expressing contrast using in spite of and despite. After despite or in spite of, we can use a noun. Despite the frozen vegetables. <laughs> in spite of the economic recession, some businesses are still doing very well. That's right. Or we can use the fact that. In spite of the fact that we live in London, these farmers can supply fresh produce every day. Despite the fact you're from different backgrounds, you have a lot in common. Despite the fact that my parents ran a business, I've never been interested in the business world. But when despite or in spite of is followed by a verb, we must use the gerund. In spite of having no previous experience, Anthony has decided to set up his own business. Now it's time for our street interviews. We asked people this question. If you could set up a business, what kind of business would it be and why? At the moment, we're, we're actually developing a business where we train and provide courses for the next generation of instructors, like I say. So I'm sort of starting to pursue where I'd like to be in the future. Given the industry I work in, I'm sure I have to be in the healthcare sector. Uh, there's a lot of scope at the moment because we, you know, as, as a society, we're living longer. And there's more demands on our on our health. Probably try and do something in selling clothes myself yeah like choosing because i think i'd be quite good at choosing what people would like and what i think would sell something i'd enjoy uh would probably be food i'd like to run a restaurant uh doing um a bit of asian cookery well actually uh, marketing which i've done so i've been in a very fortunate position to be able to set up and run something that i really have a passion for and really enjoy Building surveying, because that's what I do now, or building old cars. It could be e-commerce related. It could be service related, but providing products and a service. In my own salon, I'd love to own my own salon, but I need a good lump of money to start that, so we'll wait and see. Well, I already I have done that and it was all to do with my artwork, selling it online and um, making greeting cards and things like that. What a wide variety of businesses people mentioned. Yes, some people chose a business related to the area they work in, such as healthcare, building surveying or running their own hairdressing salon. And others chose something related to their hobbies or interests, such as clothes, food or building old cars. Well, I wish you the best of luck with your future business plans, Samantha. Thanks, Kieran. So that's it for today's programme. See you again soon. Bye.